Guys, don't forget to stop by our website and enter the boat giveaway. We will be announcing a winner sometime at the end of August, so now is the time. Don't forget, visit us over here. Part of making this ultimate outdoor rig was adding bow fishing lights. That is the major part of why we're making this. There's only one thing that really separates a boat from a bow fishing boat, and that is the lights. There are quite a few different light setups out there. Anything from simple LED light bars running off a battery to full on lights like this that penetrate deeply in the water but have to be ran on a generator. In this case, John wanted to go all out and make this the best rig he can because he's going to be using it for his guide boat. And in that case, we use lights from Outrigger Outdoors. They currently, right now, have the title of being the best, but how you had to rig them in these boxes so they look clean, that was a whole different story. We're gonna take you through that process of insulation to how we rig the boxes. If you watched the previous video of how we framed this monster, we left off right at here. So we went ahead and painted it the same color. It was coastal gray, we found the, the spray paint match at Walmart. We really lucked out on that. It saved us from having to repaint the entire boat, but we have spots designated for 12 lights, 12 specific lights. These are Outrigger Outdoors Swamp Eye bow fishing lights for floundering and obviously for bow fishing. They're so good because for one, they're extremely powerful and two, they can change colors from a deep amber color all the way to a bright white, which is very useful depending on the water clarity, which changes on lakes always. They're mounted basically by a gimbal bracket, very similar to a fish finder. You can do it in one of three ways or all three. We're gonna go ahead and mount them right in the middle with a cushion to keep it from vibrating loose. That way there can be some adjustment in play in terms of how they're directed. There's also switches for each individual light, but they come with umbilical cords so you can link all lights just to one switch, which is good because you don't wanna be pressing that thing 12 times. Powering them is a different story though, but we'll get to that later. Let's get to installing these first and get that out of the way. For starters, we want to run those wires very cleanly. There's a lot of setups out there where these are mounted, but the wires are showing everywhere. And who cares about how unsightly that looks? Just the fact that things catch on wires, you know, you got stuff going on. I just, I want to hide all those wires very cleanly out of the way. They can't catch on branches. They can't catch for like a foot or a bow or an arrow or a fishing rod or you know, things happen. We're hiding all those wires but that will ensure longevity of the system. To do that, we put holes for grommets big enough to house those very thick wires. They are thick. We have the side where the wires are protruding out of the bottom and then going into the grommet. We could have done it the other way, but I don't think it will look as clean. But the lights definitely complete the boxes. Now we can see what it's gonna look like in its true form, minus the LEDs flooding through. But what about the back? Not only do we have two separate wires, but each of these come with a 24 volt, 160 watt power supply. And those by themselves are very bulky and need to be stored in, a, in such a way that they can actually breathe. And then we're just gonna have to mount all the umbilicals and the extension wires. All that's gonna have to go somewhere and I can't think of a better way to do that, but to hide it inside a double wall. I thought about it all over the place. Thought about hiding it underneath the deck on the sides of the hatches, I thought about making their own separate compartments, and I thought about any other way than to have to extend this wall, but really this was the best way. This is 1 16th inch thick, 6063 architectural grade aluminum. It's uh, gonna be perfect since everything else is so robust and it's gonna take the brunt of the load. This is not a low bearing wall, this is just an artificial fake wall on top of the real thing. And its only purpose is to hide all these wires so you never have to look at them but still be serviceable via panels that'll come off of this angle, which we'll be adding 1 8 inch flat bar in sections, and that will complete the square structure outline that you need to attach panels. The easiest way to control these lights is to plug them all into outlets, one per each side, and then link them all together. The outlets go to a splitter, the splitter goes to a very thick extension cord, and the extension cord goes to this generator, which we will be getting to toward the end of this video. In order to hide this in here, we would have had to make this an extremely big like block, we could have hit it in the cylindrical block, like made this lower profile and those down more, but we would have had to actually plan for that. And I actually had thought about doing that, but then I thought about not doing that because of how hard it would be to ever access these should you have to access or change these or they burn out or anything. So this is a completely serviceable wall you can take off once we do, do the spread and make the bend on the brake. All right, got all five hooked up now. So, and it's all ran in that wall. So let's make sure it all works. The test button. <laughs> I would say it works exceptionally well. It lights up like the whole street. It's like street lights. 
They're so bright, I can't even look at them without looking through the phone. So like, all that light is coming from my front yard. Like all of it. It's flaring all the way down the street. <laughs> So let's just take a brief face value look at what makes these lights what they are. For one, if you get these like swamp lights, they come in various different sizes and shapes. Most of them are rectangular or square. They come with like one LED puck, maybe two. And these have like 10 individual LED pucks. And there's 36 individual units inside each puck. And you can see that some of them are white and some of them are amber colored. So I'm guessing that's how they're controlling which color you want it from deep amber to bright white, which you control by just turning the knob on the switch. So the generator is turned on, orange got it going. And that bottom one I need to be plugged in because there's nothing going to it, just, just the top one. that up yeah those lights are so bright they're even bright now you can't even look at them in the sun yeah i, I got sunglasses yeah you gotta put sunglasses on just to look at them okay, guys i finally at a pretty decent spot to where the last thing i have to do is paneling and paneling takes a little bit of time but it's not the same as rigging i don't know to get these lights on it was like an all-day event but building in the double walls was the last intricate part of these boxes. It's supposed to be pretty advanced. They're supposed to be able to hide everything and tackle look everything and glow on the inside and outside, which that is like final step three, but I'm not gonna do it until we get everything else done here. But these are set there and we will be putting a uh, perforated mesh screen right there to give these a little bit of breathable room. Couldn't stack five, could only stack four, stack that one a little bit away. I mean, it's still very close to the breather area. We join a triangle here just to kind of give the area here for some spacing, running some wires and you know tying some stuff in here. In the end, we're gonna run a conduit right here where we had that one pipe conduit running all the other three wire clusters up. And that will give us a pretty good brunt to go ahead and tie all the LEDs together. Okay, next is the decking. We gotta do the decking before we can really start doing the rigging. And there are some other things like how we foamed the boat. We did it very uniquely. We'll be talking about those things as well. And all that will be coming in the next video before we get down to the major rigging. This was rigging, but this is nothing. This was tiddlywinks compared to what we have to do for the rest of the boat, which is unfortunate, but it's part of the process. Stay tuned for the next few videos in this series. There's not going to be a whole lot of videos in this series, but the ones we do have are very crucial and informative. Take care.